What's up, Eagle Nation? Welcome back to Eagle TV. I'm Austin. And I'm Allie. And you're watching Disney. No, 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 no. We don't need a copyright strike. Oh, come on. That's no fun. Well, more fun than a lawsuit. Well, moving on. It's time for a little encouragement from Brody and Daniel in Devotion. Little. Like Cameron. She's still missing? Yeah, she's been gone for a while. I suppose we should go look for her. Not it. <sighs> Fine. I'll go first. Yeah, that's right. And for now, it's time for devotion. Hey, I'm Brody. And hi, I'm Daniel. Welcome this week's devotion. What are we talking about this week, Brody? We are talking about giving thanks to God, since, you know, it is Thanksgiving week next week. Right. Here's a Bible verse about it. Psalm 106 says, Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. This verse means that we should give thanks to the Lord and praise Him, no matter what. Right. Even if we don't want to, we should always praise the Lord, no matter the circumstances. And with that, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit and have a great week. Stress is a part of everyone's life. With homework and extracurriculars, school can cause a lot of stress. It can be debilitating, but there are ways to deal with it. Joining us today to talk about stress and time management and give us some ways to manage it are Senior Alyssa Williams and HCA Counselor Ms. Panter. Hi, I'm Alyssa Williams. I'm a senior here at Heritage. Um, and I'm in a lot of activities. I just inside of school, I, you know, I'm participating in dual credit classes. I have a lot of homework. Um, I'm in student council. I'm the student council president. Uh, I'm in cheer, and I am lucky enough to be a captain. Um, outside of school, I host um, a small segment of Rockall County Game Day for Heritage, um, and I actually have like a little tutoring business when it comes to cheer. I do private lessons for cheer. Um, which means that I am busy all the time. I barely have free time. Um, lucky enough to have free time maybe on Sundays. Um, but it comes with a lot of stress, having a lot of different activities and various things that I um, have put myself in. Um, and one way I really handle that is through my planner. I sit down every Monday um, doing advisory. I look at what dual credit classes have posted for the week. What, um, what's on written web and I put it down everything on Monday um, and then I schedule out what tasks I can handle a day because when you separate it into maybe two or three tasks a day it really helps to break down that stress helps you compartmentalize everything that you need to get done for the week and helps you breathe a lot so yeah um, Miss Panter helps a lot with stress as well so if you ever are feeling overwhelmed definitely go to her so I think this is a really important topic because stress affects all of us. There's, there's stress that we're naturally going to have in our lives, but then there are times in our lives when we are stressed and it's debilitating. And so when I think in terms of students, I know what really causes a lot of stress is time management and the fact that you guys are involved in so many different activities sometimes and you're not giving your mind time to recoup and recharge. So one of the number one things that I see when I have students that are overstressed and they need help with that is they have something scheduled every day. And I know that we like to be involved in a lot of different things, but having something scheduled every day is really hard on our brains. Um, and I want you to think about it in this way. If you're just surviving, right, then you aren't finding your purpose. You're not allowing yourself to fulfill God's calling on your life because you're just surviving, you're just getting through the day, you're just going to the next thing, and that can really add to your stress. So I would like you to think of it in terms of five areas of your life and think, what is the root of my stress? Where is this coming from? And the five areas of your life, there's physical well-being, so I'm talking about rest, eating well, exercise, how much you're looking at a screen, which really affects your brain greatly. Another area is the social well-being. So are you having positive and healthy face-to-face -face interactions with friends? Your mental well-being, and usually that means do you have positive self-talk or negative self-talk? How are you treating yourself when you're having your internal conversations? There's the emotional well-being. Are you processing your emotions? Are you allowing yourself to feel things and process or again, are you just surviving the day? 
And then there's your spiritual well-being. How connected to God do you feel? Are you allowing time to speak to Him and let Him speak to you? So in those five areas, you really want to find out what is the root of your stress? What area is it coming from? It could be a combination of things. And then ask yourself, what can I control? There's actually a really, that's a really good strategy of knowing what can I control in my life? What could I take off my plate? What could I do to change one of those five areas? And just a few tips on things that help people. Definitely getting more sleep and uninterrupted sleep and then also changing your diet. And I know that nobody wants to hear this, but the less sugar you eat, the better your brain feels. Um, we love donuts, we love Jolly Ranchers, but the best, the best thing you can do is try to get sugar out of your diet as much as possible. Some of us need to just figure out what our own personal stress outlet is. So being creative, whether that's drawing, writing, painting, singing, um, just doing something creative can be very good for your stress level. Managing your digital time. So if we spend too much time on digital media, it definitely affects our brains, which makes us feel stressed, exhausted, emotionally um, at our full capacity. Um, also, something fun and easy that not everybody realizes, but there's a lot of research behind just playing with pets. So playing with your pets is actually a really great way to de-stress. And then if you couple it with exercise, like taking your dog on a walk, um, but it's, it's actually a really good and simple way to de-stress. But I can't emphasize enough, one of the most important things is just not having something scheduled all the time. Allowing time in your week where you don't have anything to do and you can just recharge. Thank you to both Alyssa and Ms. Panter. If you'd like to learn more, go to focusonthefamily.org or see Ms. Panter for more resources. Hi, it's Madison. Today we're going to go around and see what some of our HCA student and staff's Thanksgiving traditions are. What is your favorite Thanksgiving tradition? Well, every year we gather at my sister's house. We have around 29 to about 35 people, depending on how many can come. So our favorite thing to do is everyone brings their dishes. I make pies every year. I bring about three pies. I love it. And then we watch football and we just love being with our family. What are your favorite Thanksgiving foods? Turkey and the mac and cheese. What are your favorite Thanksgiving foods? Turkey and the mashed potatoes. What are your favorite Thanksgiving foods? Um, probably my grandma makes this really good dressing. Like queso is like super good. That was fun. Personally, my favorite Thanksgiving food is pumpkin pie, but that's besides the point. Thank you and have a great Thanksgiving break. See you next time. Wow, that was some very interesting information about Thanksgiving. Speaking of Thanksgiving, don't forget to order your Christmas candy grams now. The sale ends December 2nd. But now, let's check in with Allie for an update on the missing camera. Thank you, Austin. And now for the whereabouts of Cameron? I don't know. I'm currently standing in the middle of this hallway where she has not been spotted for the past 168 hours. She obviously did not take safety precautions from Officer Jones. And now on to more tips and tricks on how to stay safe this holiday season. Officer Jones here, greetings HCA family. This week's safety tip is the two second rule. When driving, remember the two second rule, maintaining two seconds distance behind the vehicle in front of you. When the vehicle in front of you passes a point, you should count 1001, 1002 before you pass the same point. This allows you to have adequate distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. So when they hit their brakes, you don't run into the back of them causing a crash. Another safety tip is as you are enjoying your time off for the Thanksgiving holidays and you go shopping, make sure you are not looking at your phone as you're walking in the parking lots. Keep your eyes moving for all kinds of danger in the parking lots. Take care of all phone business with either within the store while you are in your vehicle sitting with the doors locked. Criminals look for opportunities to take advantage of distracted people that they can catch off guard. When shopping, it is a good idea to carry a can of pepper spray or mace on your keychain. Enjoy this Thanksgiving holiday and remember to give thanks to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for all that he has blessed us with. Love you all, HCA. 
Hello everyone and welcome back to Middle School Sports. It's been a while, but I'm back to bring you your weekly middle school sports news. Let's dive right in, shall we? Football season is over with a very successful season, so good job and congratulations to the football team. Volleyball season is also over, so let's move right along to the brand new basketball season. The girls team and boys A and B team played their first game on Tuesday against Karamdeo. The girls came up short and we have footage of number 15, Emma, making a shot. The boys A team came up short as well. I have video of number 22, Noah, making a three-pointer. The B team also came up short, and on Thursday, the boys' A team played North Dallas Adventist Academy in Richardson. And cross country has also concluded. That's all I have for you this week, and have a happy Thanksgiving, and I'll see you guys soon. Well, we still haven't found Cameron. I guess she couldn't have waited to leave until Thanksgiving break, which starts a few hours ago. Hopefully she'll be back before the time Christmas break begins on December 14th. Let's check in with Austin to see if he has any updates on the missing Cam. Thanks, Allie. I'm currently standing in the middle of this other hallway. Yeah, I don't see Cameron either. Uh, to be honest, as far as we know, uh, Cameron's disappeared off the face of the earth, and as far as we care, we don't really care anymore. Uh, this search has ultimately proved fruitless and camless, but let's just cheer you guys up and go to add us some of Weird But True. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Weird But True. Now, this fact has to do with Thanksgiving because it is next week, in case you didn't know although you would probably know by now. Anyways, did you know that turkey actually wasn't part of the first Thanksgiving feast? Weird, huh? Now, if that didn't sound weird to you, this one definitely will. Did you know that more people travel to Orlando, Florida than anywhere else on Thanksgiving? I guess that kind of makes sense because it is warmer there than anywhere else in like the US, but that's still a little bit weird. The wacky word for this week is lachnophobia. Lachnophobia is the fear of vegetables. Now that might be an issue if you have this phobia at Thanksgiving since there are a lot of different vegetables, but I guess you'll just have to find a way to avoid them. <laughs> well, that's all that I have for this week. Happy Thanksgiving and always remember to stay weird. Hey, welcome back to Dad Jokes. Mm -hmm. I'm dad and I have a dad. That, and <laughs> that's a step in the right direction, I'm but kind of qualified. You're very qualified. In fact, your dad was on last season. Mm -hmm. That was so great. It was exciting. So that's your turn now. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's almost Thanksgiving break. In uh -huh. fact, Allie just told us in the show that uh, Thanksgiving break started hours ago. So you're uh -huh. right now. You're already having fun on Thanksgiving break. That's weird to think about. It is <laughs> odd. Uh -huh. but anyway, did you bring good jokes? I uh, I think so. You gonna make me laugh? We'll try. Okay, give it a shot. You go up. Okay. Um, what do you call a running turkey? A turkey that runs track. I I'm I I don't know I don't know a turkey trot. <laughs> it's fast food. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's good. I like that. <laughs> okay, that's assuming a turkey can run fast, but, well, but they, they probably it's can. A joke, so it doesn't they, have to make sense. Well, all dad jokes make sense. Some don't. So, <laughs> when your family sits around at Thanksgiving dinner, do y'all play music at all, or do you just eat? No, I mean sometimes we have a movie in the back. Okay, so we play music. Uh huh. We play. Do you want know the best song to play while you're eating? Or, Turkey? Um, I don't know. It's all about the baste. <laughs> you know, when you cook a turkey, you baste it. The Megan Trainer song, mm -hmm. all about the baste. Mm -hmm. I thought it was funny. Okay, go ahead. You're up. <laughs> Why did the turkey cross the road? <sighs> to catch the chicken? No, because he wanted people to think he was a chicken. I don't even understand. That's so funny. I don't well, understand. Why would a turkey want to be a chicken? Because people get turkey and chicken confused sometimes. I did that once. Uh, please tell me you were like three. Was... <laughs> please don't tell me it was last year. No, not, not last year. Like like uh, maybe second grade or something okay, like that. Okay, well that's not so bad. It's not that bad. That's not that bad. Some people it's worse. Um, 
earlier on your show, you talked about the phobia of mm -hmm. green vegetables. Yeah. What role do green beans play on Thanksgiving? I mean, it's food to eat. Yes. <laughs> what else? It's the casserole. What? Green bean casserole. It's a casserole. Do you not know? Well, no, I know what that is, but how, what's the joke? I'm confused. What role do, <laughs> do green beans play at Thanksgiving? The <laughs> casserole? I forgot wow, the Wow, when <laughs> you, you forgot the joke by the time I got to the end of the joke. Okay. Okay. You're such a special cast member here, Addison. <laughs> okay, give me one more. Why did none of the pilgrims want to make bread? Why did they not want to make bread? Mm -hmm. um, boy, I, I, I don't know. It was a real crummy job to have. I get breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. Crummy job, awful. Mm -hmm. Crummy job, okay. So, well, speaking of baking or making things, you know, my grandmother always made things for Thanksgiving. It was amazing <laughs> Thanksgiving food that my grandmother would lay out. Did she out. make green bean casserole? She did, actually, <laughs> she did. Um, she also made mashed potatoes from a box. Aren't those, like, bad, though? Wait. No, that's it. That's the joke. My grandma made mashed potatoes from a box. Grandmothers never make anything from a box. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> okay, so clearly... <laughs> <laughs> the jokes I brought were not clear enough for Addison. I hope maybe I don't they. That. I know, honey. It's okay. We'll talk about it later. Okay. All right. Well, you guys have a safe and happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you guys um, in a couple of weeks. Addison, thanks for being here. You're welcome. All right. We'll see you guys later. Well, we finished our search and came to the conclusion that Kim has maybe kind of transferred to Dallas Christian. I hear it's nice this time of year. Oh, really? Okay, if you say so. I did say so. But anyways, make sure if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like. And subscribe to the channel. Also, be sure to follow our Instagram. Enjoy your Thanksgiving, and we'll see you next time.